Now, before working on the Big Six Little Six, first you should follow the four-step plan to solving problems in maths. And this is for any question. So let's have a look. The first thing you have to do is analyze the question, identify the question. What is the question actually asking me to do? And this is what I call the Big Six. Now, the second part is consider the calculations involved. And that's what I call the Little Six. And you'll see in a minute or two what I mean by that. OK, and now you've considered that you do the actual calculation, right? And to finish off the four step process, you just simply check your answer. So keep that in mind as we go forward. So let's look at the big six, little six. Now, the big six are your topics like non-calculator skills, Bodmus, area and volume, probability, frequency tables, and graphs. And the little six consists of fractions, decimals, percentages, ratio, shape and scale, and angles and coordinates. So let's take this a little bit further and you'll see what the big six and little six are. So what are the big and little six? Well, the big six are the topics on your exam paper that will gain you the most points. For example, a question on scatter graphs could be worth six points. With only 60 points available, that is 10% of your overall total just on one question. So think about that. Now, the little six are all the basic skills that you need to help you understand and calculate the big six. So where should you focus your study? Now let's examine a couple of big six questions with some little six solutions. Now, here's a typical question. Now you have to look at that and go through the four step process. So the first thing you do is analyze the question and you can quickly establish that this is a question about Bodmus using formulas. And you can see that's your first thought. Now the second part of the process is what calculations do I need to use to solve this puzzle? And you can see that's the little six. So involved in this question, there will be subtraction, there will be multiplication, and there will be working in money. Okay, now once you establish what you're doing, as far as calculations are concerned, you do the calculations. Okay, so you can see there, you recreate the formula, and then you simply follow the Bodmus rules to solve that puzzle. OK, so you convert it to numbers you can work with and you can see fairly quickly you come up with the answer of £930. And then the final part of the process, the four step process, is to check calculations. And you just pick one part of the calculations and you can do it in reverse or use a different method like estimation or something like that. OK, and that's your final answer. Now you can see this point is worth four marks. And that's a value of 7% on your overall score. Now, remember, the pass mark for the maths is around 52%. That is a big chunk just in one question. So where should you focus your study on now? Let's look at another question. Right, here's a level two question. You are guaranteed to get a question on frequency tables. And that's what this is. You can see there's a frequency table involved and there's averages. This is giving you the mean and mode from last year. And from this information in the frequency table, you have to work out the mean and mode of this year and compare both of them. So you should recognize right away that this is a question on frequency tables, including averages. So that's your big six. Now, the little six is the part so you need to solve that puzzle. So you can see here you need to multiply, you need to add. All right, you need to divide, okay, and you need to compare decimals. So watch how this works. So you can see with uh, frequency tables, you extend that out into a third column. Once you do that, you add them up. So you multiply, now you add, add up both columns. Then you divide one column by the other, okay, to get the mean. And you can see you've now calculated the mean. And to work out the mode, to compare to last year's. Now the mode is the number most often seen and you can see the number two appears 54 times in the frequency table. So that tells you that number two is the mode. 
And now you've got the, the mean for this year and the mode for this year. You just simply compare them to last year's. And that's what you do. And you, with this type of question, you're asked to make a couple of comments. That's because you want to talk about the mean and the mode. OK, so you can see there the mean is increased by 0.55. And the second comment you can make is the mode has doubled from 1 to 2. All right. Once you've done that, you do your check calculation. Just pick one part of the equation, in this case the mean, work backwards, and you can see the answer is 209. OK. Now, this question is a value of 10%. 10% on one question. All right. Now, did you know there are around 20 questions on both papers, your non-calculator and calculator? The non-calculator section is worth 25% of your overall marks. That's why it's one of the big six. Because if you get all your non-calculator skills, your basic skills you learned at primary school, if you get them off to a T, you're almost halfway to passing the exam before you even start the calculator paper. So invest time in doing your uh, basics. Right, now the last six questions, usually the big six, are on your calculator paper. Work out an average of about 45% of the total marks available. That's the last six questions. All right. So if you think about it, 45% on six questions and 25% on your non-calculator paper gives you a total of 70%. That's a big chunk and it's a good pass. Now you know where to focus your study, the big six. So good luck.